What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at a real cool one, Custom Division from Shirgoroff. This is the Hattie Magnetic, um, which is basically the regular Hattie, which is considered a, an F95 with a front carbon scale. So this is the Custom Division version of that, and I uh, just wanted to show you the knife, talk about how amazing it is, create immediate jealousy, and uh, force you guys to go out on the open market and spend more money than you want to on this gorgeous knife. Um, I'm just kidding, obviously. As, as normal, this is a uh, very casual conversation like I'd have at a coffee shop with you um, where we kind of go over a bunch of stuff, see the knife, talk about it, whatever. Uh, reminder, a lot of this stuff, uh, not necessarily custom division stuff, but a lot of knives I do videos on are available on the website currently. Uh, so right now there's the website bladezilla.ca and I've got a number of knives on there, the new uh, Ignis, uh, F3 Fire, and uh, some new Quantums and a bunch of stuff. My Instagram's linked below, so follow me on Instagram, send me a message, uh, whatever, bladezilla.ca. Apologize in advance for the short plug, but you know, some people are leaving comments like, I don't know where to find your website, and it's literally in the about section of the channel. So. Um, anyway, that's another conversation. Let's take a look at this beautiful custom division knife from Shira Goroff. So, first and foremost, you know, the recognizability factor on this should be similar, or sorry, should be familiar because it is an F95, which is their most common folding knife, I believe. Let's do some quick measurements on this, shall we? We are coming in at end to end, eight and three quarters, or eight and five eighths, somewhere in there. Blade of four inches, uh, 95 mil, right? If you want to change off of that, please just look at the measuring tape and decide what you want to do for length, width, girth, just kidding. Um, the blade itself should be a Snuggy V, I think. Yep, yeah. Snuggy V, which is beautiful. And uh, absolutely a looker. What's unique though about this guy is that scale. And we'll talk about that after we do a couple more size comparisons. Um, let's do the custom division comparisons. So we have the beautiful Mini Quantum. And remember, I am putting this towards the bottom of the lens. So it will appear bigger than if I take this and put it above. Look, look how much smaller it immediately got. So it's somewhere between that for the camera angle. Um, we have somewhere in the middle here, we could grab our Stellar. And I will gently put that in between here. So there's your Stellar, which is your first, which one, that's a Sprint Run Stellar. And uh, Mini Quantum, one Mini Quantum Sprint Run and uh, the Hattie Magnetic. Uh, but the main one people probably want to compare this with is the Turtle which is the F95 Custom Division, which is this one. Um, and it's, I'm happy to say they are very similar in almost every way, other than that front scale. And a lot of other little detail things, but size-wise, uh, carry-wise, very similar. And just looking at the two, you can kind of see how much this one's kind of raised up a little bit. And that's, uh, it's a much thinner and lighter carry on the magnetic which is just stunning. So let's get into this. So I'm not going to show it with a Chris Reed Sabenza. This is, uh, I don't want to degrade the Sabenza, but it is not at the same level of this nice knife. And I apologize in advance for that. I'll be getting flamed in there in the comments, I'm sure, but uh, they're not on the same level. So let's take a look. First of all, we've got a carbon fiber scale on here, which is very, very unique. Something that, uh, not a lot of people are doing detail work to the same level on a carbon fiber or kind of or carbo tie or I, I don't know what the exact uh, verbiage verbiage is for this, but no one's really doing that level of detail on it. You see the magnetic name from this, I believe, comes from I want to say there's like iron flakes or filings inside this carbon fiber, which when you get it under the right light, it pops like you wouldn't believe. Like, I'm looking at the camera right now, and it's doing absolutely no justice 
to kind of how that looks. Now you are seeing on the front scale curvature from a nice sweeping kind of bow to it, almost like a, a shell of like an oyster, um, just like a whoo, nice seashell kind of pattern to it, which looks absolutely terrific. You have the Shergorab logo on the tip of the on the knife here in the corner, which is nicely held in place. Kind of reminds me of the way they did it on the Stellaris. It's probably bonded in there in some fashion. I think it looks absolutely stunning. You've got um, micro milling on carbon up top here. That is just bananas. Okay, captive pivot system. Some milling on the flipper tab, which your finger finds super easy and well because it kind of cuts in and finds that little spot. Now I will compare it with a quantum where the quantum tip is you know, the tab's built into the, the end of it, whereas this, your finger kind of falls into that. So it's up to you which is more preferable. Um, between you and I, I kind of like the uh, F95, but definitely have a sweet spot for the way the Quantum is built. So the micro milling, the flipper tab, the detail on there is nuts. It's something you have to just see to believe. As you open this, this is another little detail. Watch where that flipper tab goes and the tolerance. Look at this. Oh my god, is it going to hit? It is so tight and how this is squished in. Um, and my buddy Daniel calls this the new squished in style. But that tab just almost touches. It is like millimeters away. That's just the tolerances that are nuts. So we're six minutes in and I barely even showed the work of art, which is the other side of the scale, which is like icebreaker-esque. Look at this. Oh my god. The milling is just nuts. How good is that? It's it's next level. Like, oh, I, I can't even begin to describe the level of detail that is on this milling here. And it's everywhere. Like, you might look at the milling and just kind of see the, the big, thick patterns and go, yeah, that looks great, looks nice. But it's, it's the spots up here that it's kind of hard to show because of the light. But this is all micro-milled in front of the flipper tab. Hopefully you can see that if you're watching in 4K. I'll kind of roll it to kind of show, but it's all micro-milled and so subtle. It just looks ridiculous. Okay. Uh, the clip, beautiful as well, nice polished clip on there, so it's going to unfortunately show every fingerprint and every little scratch known to man on the clip, but uh, you know if you're carrying it, then you're going to get that anyway. And then back here as well, above the clip, all that micro milling once again. Isn't that just nuts? Um, and then on the lock bar as well, the micro milling that's inside the little bow here, if you watch that. Just try to roll it so you can kind of see. There, you kind of saw it there. It's so small. It just looks so amazing. The details just. Uh, I can see why these are so hard to get because uh, of the details. Like, normally on a standard, you know, F95 or whatever, like that's pretty plain Jane in here. It's more of a stone wash. If you get really close, you start to see the lines. You know, this guy, it's just at a whole other level. You have to really, really look at it, and then when you do see it, it just pops. Anyway, size-wise on this, beautiful fit and finish. Your fingers just fall into the handle from the other side because it's concave. That's the first thing I notice holding this, is like, it sucks into the handle and it like doesn't want to fall off of it because it just grips right into it. Like you're almost gaining like, I don't know what the depth is, maybe a mil or two, but it just grips right onto that handle. Anything like other Shergoros. Maybe the Mini Quantum has it. This is just an incredible feel on a knife. The jimping matches the backspacer. 3D milled as well try to show that detail. Beautiful detail work. You can see all the little cuts in here. Just make it look so good. 
the patterns matched. Now we don't have any micro milling inside this like we do on the back spacer, which is fine. The jimping is definitely long and usable. If you did want to wear this with a glove, I, I, I go ahead, but I, you know, I don't see many people probably using this knife. It's still flat up top, and then it goes down the blade. And we've got a nice push out, I guess you can call it, or swedge or whatever you want to call it. That uh, just it's nice and flat to kind of add some strength to the tip. Just a nice touch, but otherwise very Shiragorafi, and then top it off with that custom division logo on there, which is just timeless. It's like Louis Vuitton, and then that S90V written on the blade there. And I apologize, I just wiped this down, and I can see there's uh, some fingerprints already forming. <laughs> so. Uh, it's very susceptible. I also say this on the uh, flats on the blade. I believe it's mirror polished. Yeah. So let's just grab this little cloth here and kind of take some of these fingerprints off. But um, as you look down the blade, you can kind of see the flats are all mirror polished. And with that, I would assume the blade is as well. Yep. If it wants to focus, the blade should be mirror. I'm guessing. Looks great. Looks absolutely great. You know, the more you polish something, the more it shows fingerprints, and then as soon as you do a video, someone will be like, oh my god, there's a fingerprint on there. Why is it so dirty? How dare you? And to that I say, you are right. Always right. Now we do have uh, some hardware on here that if you do want to utilize, um, you know, to take apart, you can use obviously like a, a flathead screwdriver. It is proprietary. Please, for the love of Jesus, do not use a screwdriver. Get the tool or use a credit card, fold it over on itself, or a penny. They will not be put in there. Super, super heavy as well, but um, just use the right tools on a knife of this caliber, please. And we don't have any writing here like we do on some of the other ones. They've kind of kept that nice and smooth. Now, on the inside, it is all micro milled, and it is micro milled to a level that is bananas and difficult to show. Um, but I will do my best to show uh, that underneath is usually where they put it on that backspacer, where they'll put a serial number. And it's hard to show this because I'm trying to focus on the knife, but also trying to hold in a light. Um, so hopefully underneath there you can see, but usually they write it in there. Uh, in my case, I'm holding it upside down, but it should say 2021, I think. What does it say? Custom Division 220133, I think is what I got. I know this is painful to watch, I'm sorry. But there's going to be someone who wants to see that, so I need to get a pen light. Anyway, it's written inside there. Pretty simple. I'll get a pen light, okay? I'll, I'll prime one. I'm not asking for donations to buy it, but uh, I should get one. Now, what else do I got for you on the inside here? So, obviously it's all milled out. It looks very smooth and clean, and it's, it's one of the best internally that you'll ever get. Uh, best knife in the entire universe, no big deal. Um, on the lock bar, you'll see that we've got a nice rounded, contoured, spot here for your thumb. And this is how I was expecting the uh, Quantum Mini to feel, because I love this one particularly. It feels unreal. It's pushed out just enough that uh, when, it's in your, when it's in your paw, you definitely notice it. And when you get closer and closer and closer, you'll see how micro-milled that entire area is, and how it's just nuts. The detail is just insane. Hopefully the camera is picking up some of that, but just the work on that. We obviously have a lock bar, a metal lock bar insert at about 10-15% lockup, which is pretty standard for these knives. They keep it pretty light. Um, now remember, not it's not just about the material being used uh, that can be worn out and replaced. It's also about tuning between the blade steel and the titanium lock bar. Um, you'll want that, certainly. So, you definitely want a different material there to kind of tune it and prevent any lock-up kind of thing, or lock-stick. 
But, uh, oh my gosh, just look at this knife. You know, it's funny because when I film these videos, I don't actually watch uh, a whole lot of uh, what I'm doing with my hands. I'm watching a screen to make sure that it's kind of focused on certain things that I'm talking about. And the color is constantly changing just because of how reflective the materials are. The ISO, the camera is just freaking out. Uh, it's it's difficult. But this one, I'm hoping with all the different angles and different different adjustments the camera makes, you should get an idea of kind of the color on it. And how as you move that kind of light around, you should be getting the reflection of that iron, I think is what's inside it, like I said earlier. But just, it's insane. And you, and you, you won't see it. You won't see it on camera. Uh, your eyes will pick it up, though. It's nuts. So what else? what else do I have? I'm 15 minutes in, and I'm sure I've missed 500 things on this knife. And I'm just going to... I can see there's like an oil drop in there from the bearings. So, there we go. There we go. Always keep a microfiber cloth around these guys to keep those uh, polished flats nice and beautiful. Um, this one is just nuts smooth. And it's it's on the single roll roller bearings. So like, you know, it's uh, if if you talk about the bearing systems on Shiro's, obviously you have the single roll bearing, the multi roll bearing, the single roller bearing, and then and then the multi roller bearing. Um, custom divisions and up tend to be, tend to use rollers. There's some exceptions to that rule. Uh, there's full customs with multi roll bearings. And there's uh, also some special editions with roller bearings. So um, think of the single roll bearings as a bearing on a track in a circle, like most knives. Multi-row bearings as kind of three balls in a row, kind of creating sun's rays around a circle, right, in a pinwheel pattern. And then roller bearings as kind of hot dogs that roll in a kind of needle bearing fashion. And then multi-row bearings as cut hot dogs kind of arranged in a different pattern based on the design of the knife. So that's summarized in about 30 seconds. But, uh, yeah, more than anything, like, a video like this, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you anything. There's going to be guys that know way more about this knife than I do. Um, the main thing to take away is just how sensational this thing is compared to uh, some of the other models. You know, the, everything from the, the cutout for that flipper tab and how it's, like, barely fits inside the squished frame here. That are two materials. That's not easy. But uh, it's still flat on the inside there so that when you do pop your finger down it's nice and soft it's still a sheer gore off so it can be used it's still solid zero blade play absolutely dead center and it's another knife that just adds a little tab down there to be like yep if you want to uh, if you want to uh, exam exemplify how off-center something is you know that would do it but it's it's just dead center um, now one thing I didn't talk about is the lanyard hole. It's kind of tucked into, tucked a little bit into the, uh, uh, between the two sides here. You still can run it, of course. Uh, as, as I've said in multiple videos, you don't have to, but you can utilize a lanyard in there. It, uh, it hides it well, unlike the Stellar, which we talked about, how the lanyard hole is very present. Some people love it. It's obvious that way. Some people don't love it and uh, it annoys them if it wants to focus there we go you know it's just a little detail that it's unique to that design but uh, on these they build it into the backspacer which looks awesome and I don't have a problem with that it's just like that on the mini quantum right same thing on the F95T turtle they've done the same uh, exact thing and, uh, you know, it might, it might be a cool little comparison to take a look at between the two. One's a little flatter. I think on the Hattie it might be a little thinner, if I'm honest. Which makes me wonder if they're, they are the exact same. Looking at it under a light, it might just be more rounded, actually, on the magnetic. Maybe that's what I'm seeing. Maybe that's what I'm seeing. Or maybe they're the same, I don't know. It's pretty cool to compare this kind of stuff. I think that's half the fun of doing these videos. It's just comparing. 
Now if we were to compare this with a production Hattie, and uh, maybe fire it out a little better than that, uh, I think I have a, a red carbo tie here. There's your brand new production Hattie to compare with. So if we're looking at similarities, well, uh, there aren't many other than uh, the blade length and a couple shapes here and there, but uh, two completely different knives all around. Two completely different knives. You know, like it's uh, it's night and day. And, and I'm telling you this, the Hattie itself, the, the standard production Hattie, is beautiful. I love that knife. But you get one of these and you compare them side by side, it's, it's not even fair. It's not even fair. Um, such a workhorse here on the production Hattie, such a piece of art. I, I think the milling on the custom division knife is, it's got to be up there with some of the best they've ever done. Um, it so reminds me of an icebreaker, it's nuts. Um, if we compare widths, try not to bump these. Remember, I'm, I'm hugged around a tripod with a camera and a huge light above me, so um, I'll do my best to not bump anything around here. There we go. So widths between the two, that should give you a pretty good indicator if you know what the width of a standard Hattie is like. The detail work between the two on the uh, backspacers, night and day. And remember, Hattie's done so well. For a production knife, it's, it's next level. But between a custom division and a Hattie, it's like they've ratcheted things up just another full level. See what I'm saying? Clip-wise, very similar style, right? Just more, more flavor on magnetic. A lot more flavor. But for the most part, done very similar. Kind of all the way around. Done very, very similar. So that is kind of it on those comparisons. Um, blade thickness, I think, is fatter on the Hattie as well. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. You should be able to look down and see. Yeah, a little thick, a little bit, a little bit thicker on the production line, obviously. Actually, a lot a bit thicker, and then the uh, the contouring and the level of detail down the blade is also very different. It's interesting to me how they've brought the jimping down the blade further on the custom division. That's interesting, but otherwise very similar, just kind of similar but different, right? Kind of all the way around. Beautiful knives. I love the Hattie. Love that knife. Feels like a workhorse. You know, maybe it's you use a Hattie as your your carry, and then when you want to go out to dinner, maybe bring one of these. If you're into if you're into the carbon lighter weight, full size, you know you can't beat a Hattie. So, anyway, I think this looks gorgeous, and I think I've been rambling for over 20 minutes now. So hopefully that's uh, not a deterrent. But you know, a knife like this, I, I always try to do as much as I can, and show you the knife is is much as I can, different angles, different lights, um, different comparisons, because you know what? You guys deserve that. You guys deserve to see the knife in every little configuration known to man. And I love doing this stuff. So there you go. Uh, one little thing I will say as a kind of a bonus thing if you've made it this far in the video, I think the the magnetic term was actually by accident because I think there's a translational error between iron and and magnet or something and then then it just kind of became known as the magnetic as its nickname but I don't think they intended for that I think it just had to do with the iron and the iron fillings in the design itself which is kind of funny it's funny how those things work but uh, yeah um, what else have I missed? So I talked about the blade, S90V, I've talked about uh, the cool logo on there, I've talked about how they've epoxied in the handle on the Shiro logo, which looks terrific. Um, the lock bar insert is a different material as well, which is awesome. The, the curvature, there's no hot spots. The micro milling on the back is just next level. Um, the internal milling work as well is just next level. Um, Beautiful. Oh, I should say the clip itself, 
is uh, leaned on this side of the frame so that when you're putting this in your hand, it transfers the weight of the clip to the side of the lock bar, which is a nice little design feature because Shiro's, if I'm putting weight on the, the lock bar itself, it doesn't like to uh, shoot out if you're holding it like that. And I'll show you. If I'm holding it like this, right, and I'm trying to flick it out, it, it, it kind of it fights you a little bit. Whereas if you're holding it in your hand and your palm is holding on to the, the clip, right? However you want to launch it, I just kind of put my fingers on the, the clip and uh, out it comes. No questions asked. First try. First time every time. So anyway, that's a nice little tip. Um, otherwise, yeah, the, the clip, the backspacer is nuts. It's got a lanyard hole. Beautiful collector's piece. These are going to be coming... Uh, going to be harder to find because I think that the milling on this is next level and uh, it's going to be highly desirable. Very highly desirable to the right buyer, which is a lot of people right now. So that, I think, might be my custom division magnetic video for you guys. I know that uh, it hasn't been asked, but it's one of my favorites and... Uh, I definitely wanted to get this one done on a week with a little bit of downtime. So um, there you go. Appreciate you guys stopping by. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Please visit the site, bladezilla.ca. I'm add adding inventory every week. And uh, if there's anything you don't see in the store, let me know and I'll make sure to add it. Okay, guys? Have yourselves a great week. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Okay? See you guys later. Peace.